helps if I unmute it. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing, but it wouldn't be the first time we had that type of mistake happen. So yes, um, good morning, happy Tuesday. Uh, glad you are here, um, whoever's there. Uh, I hope you have your coffee or your Diet Coke or your water or your orange juice. Um, I'm really going to have to rename this to Bible and Beverages or something. Uh, anyhow, good morning. It is 10 a.m. on Tuesday. It is the, uh, what day is it? It's the 17th of November. Good morning, Jill. It's good to uh, have you here as always. I think you've said you've never missed one or maybe you've missed one total, but I'll forgive you. Uh Anyhow, uh, we're, I'm glad you guys are here. Good morning, Barbara. Um, this morning, I wanted to share with you something. Hey, Scott. It's good to uh, see your uh, icon. Um, I, I've been reflecting upon this idea uh, really uh, just over the past few days, and I thought it would be something good to encourage you guys with. Uh, but before we get there, I had a question for everyone who uh, watches live and then everyone who watches after the fact, whatnot. Um, I'm wondering if a different time of the week would be better for people to participate live. Um, if that would be helpful, if that would mean more people would participate live, uh, just something to think about and consider. Um, we'll probably, when it comes to Christmas time, uh, we'll probably take a break over Christmas week and the week after. And then maybe if everyone's like, hey, this would be a better time to to do it live, uh, we might switch times at, after the beginning of the year. So if you think a time would be better for you, um, you can comment here now uh, or you can comment later if you're watching after the fact, either on YouTube or on our Facebook channel. Uh, yeah, I would love for to hear what days, times you think would be good. Um, and if now, if the normal time works great, awesome. Uh, yeah, well, and we'll kind of take a look at it. And then secondly, uh, really exciting for next week. We're planning to have another, uh, interview with one of the workers we support. So I hope you'll come and join us for that. And I think you'll be, uh, excited to hear from them or him. Uh, I don't know if his wife will join him or not. I gave them the option. Uh, so hopefully you'll join us for that and that'll be a good time and let you hear more about their ministry. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, let you hear more from them directly because maybe you don't know about their ministry or you know a little bit and you want to know a lot more. Anyhow, uh, I think it'll be a good time. So uh, make sure you come next week for that and, uh, let us, let me know if a different time works better for you than this or whatnot. So yeah, anyhow, uh, let's get to it and we will look at, uh, two, uh, passages today. Um, and this is something that the Lord kind of impressed upon me the other day and something that he's kind of showing me and helping me to work through. Um, and, I want us to read first Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, and then we'll jump to first Thessalonians 5. It says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time, of the time, because the days are evil. So Paul is telling the Ephesians to make sure that they are walking in a careful way because they could stumble or they could, um, they could have issues they would encounter and they need to be wise in what they're doing and that they need to make the best use of their time because the days they are living in are evil. Um, I think that's a universal truth that until the Lord comes back, we are in times that have evil. And so even if they might feel good at certain moments uh, and comparatively to other periods of time, they might be better, but they're still evil no matter what. And so uh, Paul is encouraging them to Make sure that they walk wisely, that they are uh, redeeming their time, that they are using it in a positive fashion. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, or 517, he says, pray without ceasing. So Paul wants the Thessalonians to pray all the time. Let it be something that is uh, really that they are marked by, that they uh, 
when you think about the Thessalonians, they should be praying all the time. They're kind of, uh, they're, they are consumed with prayer. Prayer is just happening ongoing. Now we, we kind of, I think when we read that, we think, well, that's just not possible. And so we, we kind of say, uh, oh, well, I'm not going to strive for that because it feels like an impossibility. I don't think we should do that. But additionally, I think there's a way that we might be able to uh, at least embrace this, this idea of praying all the time and redeeming the time. How can we put the time that we have to our best use? And how could we um, use that time that we have for prayer? And here's the area or the way that I think we can do this. I think it would be, it just takes a slight shift and it becomes, it really could become quite natural and easy. Um, and it really doesn't take anything other than intentionality. So this this thought came to my mind. How often are we in the middle of doing something where we can't do anything else, right? Um, you think, okay, I'm washing dishes or I'm uh, taking a shower or I'm uh, weeding in the yard. Things where you really, you you kind of can't do anything else. You're that that's your sole task, and that's all you're doing. And say you're doing it by yourself. You're there's no one else in the house, and or everyone's in another room, and so you can't have a conversation with them, whatever it may be. How often in those times, those moments of like there is nothing going on, do we just let our minds wander? We we think I it just I'm I'm doing my hair, and I'm not even really thinking about it because um, yeah. Clearly, I did my hair this morning. Um, I'm doing my hair, and uh, I'm not even thinking about it, and so my mind's just wandering off somewhere. It's thinking about that thing I need to buy, that other thing I need to do. But how often could we, in turn, use that time, that empty space where you are you really can't do anything else other than the task you're doing, but it's not occupying your mind. How often could we use that for prayer? Could you, while you're drying off as you're getting out of the shower, uh, think about praying for something or someone uh, using that time that you really, uh, let's be honest, you're you're not doing anything else. Your mind is not mentally taxed. Could you use it to pray? Or um, you're driving somewhere and you're by yourself and it's just quiet moments and you're not listening to a book. You're uh, you're not listening to talk radio, whatever. Could you use it for prayer? Or you're waiting in line at the grocery store. Um, or you're <laughs> starting today, you're waiting in line to get in the grocery store. <sighs> That's going to be fun, right? We're going to be waiting around a lot more, unless you shop with Amazon and or Instacart or whatever, and you just have it brought to you. Um, there's going to be a lot of waiting with the 25% rule. So could you use that time that's really just downtime? It's empty. You're not using it for anything else. And could you spend it in prayer? Uh, I think we can. I think we should. Because really, prayer is something that we can do. And it is uh, it is really one of the best uses of our time. As we're thinking and considering that we're asking the God of the universe to to do something. We're, we're asking the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to do something for us. And uh, he is capable and he is willing and he is able to do more than we can think to even ask or imagine. So that's what the Lord had kind of impressed upon me over the last week. And it was something that I thought, hey, you know, this would be really good for us to consider and think about. So I would urge you just in those quiet moments where you really can't be doing anything else um, to maybe spend some time in prayer. Maybe you're washing dishes and you think, and someone pops in your brain, you think, oh, I wonder how so-and-so is doing. Why not pray for them? Or, hey, you know, those little things that just pop into our mind from time to time when our mind is really empty of critical thought um, or complex thought, whatever. Uh, where it's just kind of wandering away, could we use that to to pray? I think we can. And um, there's a uh, there was a monk in oh I should have looked up the year, 
Um, his name's brother Lawrence, and he wrote a book kind of, it's called Practicing the Presence of God. And it's about how he would redeem his time as he was the cook in the monastery and how he would redeem that time through prayer. Uh, and so it's just a really interesting concept idea of taking the time we have uh, when we're doing other things that don't require our mental faculties to the same degree that other things do and using it to prayer. So it's what I wanted to encourage you to friends this week, uh, maybe spend some time, extra time praying um, time that you already have and you're using for something else, but you can double up. And so therefore you are redeeming the time. So uh, I hope that's a blessing to you and an encouragement. Uh, I would love to, if you try this over the next week, um, Allison says, good book. Yes. Uh, Amber loves it. I've read part of it and haven't finished it. I have way too many books that that is true of. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, so maybe take a challenge this week to say, hey, I'm going to spend some extra time where in, in prayer while I'm doing other things. And, um, and yeah, and then I would love to hear if you do it and you try it and you're like, hey, this, I really found this impactful or no, John, that was a terrible idea. Um, I don't think you'll say that, but, uh, and I don't think that would even be the case. So uh, I would love to hear if you kind of try it this week and hear how the Lord uses it. I think it'd be fantastic and fun to hear the ways that God um, used it. You could even come back later on and um, I don't know where the comment box is, wherever it is, uh, put it in the comments of the video after the fact of how the Lord used it. And yeah, that's all I got for you. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you all on Sunday. Have a great week, everyone.